um, my high school, Toulouse High School. I'm going to go to Georgia State and I'm going to major in biology. Uh, uh, hi, my name is Kanishka Patel. I go to the Kula High School. I'm going to Mercer University and I'm going to major in bio. I plan on going to Kennesaw State. That may or may not change by the fall semester. Um, and I plan on also majoring in biology. Hi, my name is Leslie. Um, I go to Peachtree Ridge High School, and I will be attending the University of Georgia with an intended major of microbiology. My name is Karina and I go to Northview High School and I'm a junior but this fall I want to find a UGA in North Carolina State University and I want to major in chemistry. I think. Alright, so what is neonatology? Uh, neonatology is the medical specialty of taking care of newborn babies, sick babies, premature babies. So basically they are baby doctors. Um, the word neonatology is set together from several root words, neo, natal, and ology, and they essentially mean the science of the newborn. Um, the next slide is about what you have to do before you go to medical school if you intend to be a neonatologist and basically in high school you just have to see if you have an interest and you want to try to build an interesting and unique resume with volunteering and things like the medical scores and in college you want to choose a major that it doesn't have to be um, a typical pre-med major like biology or um, biomed but it should fulfill the courses you need to apply to medical school and then you want to try to get a competitive MCAT score and uh, build relationships so you can get good recommendations when you apply to medical school. Alright, so education after undergrad, there is four years of medical school, um, three years of pediatric internship and residency, and an additional three years of neonatology fellowship. Um, after obtaining your MD or DO degree, um, depending on where you go, um, you must first learn to be um, a general pediatrician through a pediatric training program, also known as residency. And these programs are um, typically three years long, and they allow physicians to specialize in a, um, sorry, in a particular area of medicine, and it gives them a chance to treat children with a variety of illnesses in clinics, in patient wards, and even ER departments. And after that, there's another um, three additional years of training called Neonatology Fellowship. And it usually includes a mix of direct patient contact, so one-on-one -on -one patient care and treating patients, and lectures and classes in neonatology. And it exposes physicians to preterm babies with a wide range of issues from respiratory failure, um, growth restrictions, um, and infections. And I'm pretty sure you guys all know, but to practice legally, all doctors, including neonatologists, must be licensed to practice medicine in the state where they live. Um, so after medical school, they can apply for a temporary license to practice during the residency, and then after that, um, they can apply for a permanent medical license. Okay, the fun part. Um, the annual salary of a neonatologist varies depending on the industry, the company size, where you are, how many years of experience you have, and your level of education. Um, there are 10 very popular cities in the United States, and Atlanta is actually the fifth most popular city for neonatologists. Um, the top three are Philadelphia, Baltimore, and Boston. But the um, medium, median expected annual pay is $228,959. So that's a hefty amount, but actually I remember talking to Dr. Leslie Lee during our um, NICU rotation and he said that neonatologists are actually the most, or the least paid among surgeons. So I found that kind of surprising. And that 
benefits. Um, there are a lot of benefits, monetary benefits, um, with being a neonatologist. This is kind of a chart that goes through, you know, your, your base salary plus your bonuses, 401k, healthcare, but as a grand total, it's about $323,700 a year. Okay, some of the common conditions in the NICU. Anemia, premature babies are, off, are often anemic. They don't have enough red blood cells. Normally the fetus stores the iron during the later months of pregnancy and uses it after birth to make red blood cells. And infants born too soon may not have enough to have enough time to store iron. Anemic infants may be treated for dietary <coughs> iron supplements, drugs that increase red blood cell production, or in some cases, a blood transfusion. Breathing problems can also occur. The pre premature babies, sorry, typo, um, have breathing problems when they have when their lungs are not fully developed. And full term babies can also have breathing problems due to complications of labor, de labor and delivery, birth defects, and infections. An infant with breathing problems may be given medications, a, respirator, a respirator to help him breathe, or a combination of these two treatments. A respiratory distress syndrome, RDS, are when babies are born 34 weeks of before 34 weeks of pregnancy often develop a serious breathing problem. RDS is sometimes called hyaline membrane disease. Babies with RDS lack chemical mixture called surfactant, which keeps the small air sacs in the lungs from collapsing. Jaundice also occurs. I remember that when we went to the NICU, we actually, we actually saw a jaundiced baby. Um, they're really small and they are yellow to the skin. It was surprising to me because I've never really seen a jaundiced baby before. I've only heard my anatomy teacher talk about it when we learned about stuff about babies. Um, but yeah, they are yellow to the skin because the liver is too immature or sick to remove waste product from the blood. Keeping warm can also be an issue for babies. You know, babies need to be kept warm. You coddle them, you give them love, you, all, you just keep them with you, and it's really important. But babies who are born too small and too often, um, too soon often, have trouble controlling their body temperature, unlike healthy full-term babies. They don't have enough body fat to prevent the loss of heat from their bodies. <coughs> Congenital heart defects. Con co okay, you might see that I'm having trouble with that word. Sorry. Coronation, thank you. Of the aorta. Heart valve abnorm abnormalities, patient ductus arteriosus. Is it already? Patient ductus arteriosus. Okay, PDA. Yeah. <laughs> oh, there you go. of the greater arteries. There are also feeding issues, hypoglycemia, in which where the low when, in which where there is low blood pressure or glucose. It is usually diagnosed in a baby shortly after birth. Babies born to the mothers with diabetes have their glucose checked regularly and assessed for hypoglycemia. Um, IUGR, intrauterine growth restriction. A baby with this condition grows more slowly than usual in the utero and, and is smaller than normal for his gestational age at birth. Intraventricular <coughs> hemorrhage, IVH. IVH usually, usually refers to breathing in the brain and is most common in the smallest premature babies, those weighing less than three and one third pounds. The bleeds usually um, occur in the first four days of life. So I'm going to talk about the procedures. One of them is called arterial line, where a line is inserted into the artery of the baby, usually in the wrist or ankle. And by this, it can, can, it can um, monitor the blood pressure and withdraw blood for blood test. Another way is, um, it's pretty familiar, a CPAP, where it applies a little bit of pressure to the baby. The baby's already breathing on its own, but with a little bit of pressure,
pressure applied when the baby exhales, it makes sure that the lungs don't collapse. Um, phototherapy, um, it exposes the baby to a blue light, which breaks down bilirubin that's found in the skin, and this is the yellow pigment that causes jaundice. And once the bilirubin is broken down, it can be extruded through urine, which, which gets rid of it. And um, therapeutic hypothermia, the baby doesn't actually get hypothermia, it just keeps it cool so that the brain doesn't overheat. And these are usually with babies that are, they're, they're not really that premature, they just, we just have to make sure that they don't overheat. Um, that's it. Thank you, that was delightful. Um, a lot of time and effort put into that, and uh, there were things, it makes me think.